euro terms, which is very difficult having euro terms and euro text gets confused a lot. But uh, multi spindle turning is what we started with. Uh, in the early 90s, we switched our name from KMS Screw Machine to KMS Precision Machining. Uh, we started with Akumas, uh, twin spindle or twin turret machines, uh, and had a, a long, long relationship with them. Uh, we've always bought big name machines. You know, Euroturn was probably the, when we first started with Eurotech, it was the newest and it was really ste stepping out of a limb for us. Uh, We've had Kuma, Hardinge, Nakamura, you know, places with big names, lots of machines, lots of service. Um, and it was, a, it was a big step for us. We started with LG Evans buying Swiss machines. Uh, we had a, a part which I didn't bring uh, running on an M32 that we processed with them. And uh, they came in and introduced us to the Euro uh, Tech. We had a, a 710, that's an OI. And we cut the cycle time in half. Uh, it was really amazing. Uh, depth of cut, better, uh, party or chip evacuation, um, just the, the processing and the support behind it, the innovative thinking, uh, just it, it grew from there. Uh, so we went and we got our 710 and we bought a 420, um, and that was our start with Eurotech. Um, as we progressed, our Kumas were later in years, we had mid 80s, uh, and we started to uh, look at upgrading. Um, we started looking at Emox uh, and a couple other brands, and we, we started with um, PESA, which made a blue turn. Uh, we started with blue turn because at that point we didn't know that Eurotech had a machine. There was very little literature on them, no one was really pushing them, and uh, I still, you know. I don't see a lot of literature ever come out about them. Of course, there's only two in the states here, and I think two up in Canada. Um, but we wanted to get away from having a person in front of the machine chucking parts. Because you have bathroom breaks, you have cigarette breaks, you have people late. Uh, we run typically 40, 30 to 40 pound parts, and putting your part in a horizontal, or you know, in your lathe, putting it on there every day. Whereas down people, you say 30 to 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. You can only have certain people run them because of just strength, fatigue. Uh, and we saw <coughs> EV as a way to get around it. Um, what we run, and this was our first part that we did, uh, it is for the heavy equipment. It goes into John Deere tractors. Uh, we bought the EV 315. We have three different parts uh, that we make 40 a day of. Um, this is a uh, this is great. No, this is yeah, this is great cast iron. Um, so what we started with is this part, and I don't know if anyone's ever seen a BV. Uh, I'll give you a little explanation. Uh, it's an inverted spindle. Turret sits on the bottom, chucks up here. Uh, you have a carousel that goes around, and you have a prism. I brought the smaller one just because it was easier to trap with. Um, we will take our blank. We set it inside the prism. The beautiful thing about it is it locates in your V here. Thus, no matter what your diameter is, it can figure out the center. By going to my control, putting in a four inch diameter piece of stock, locating on the V, it knows where the center of that part is. And then enter the height of the part. Now, a chuck, which is sitting above, can travel over, pick up a part. Um, we have Takasawas, uh, Mianos, uh, lots of parts with lots of automation. If I'm going to switch from you know, this part here to this part here, I've got to change typically two to four sets of grippers, put my jaws in, and change some pneumatics, some heights, uh, etc., to get that part to be automated, which two to three hours. Plus, if you get a new part, you have to make all your grippers, etc. All I do now is I bore my jaws, tell it my diameter and my height, and away I go. My automation has gone from three to six hours to, to put together to five minutes just by entering in the data. Um, we started with you know, these parts, but this was our main goal in mind was to do bigger parts. Uh, we do a lot of cast iron. 
a um, lot of other parts that you, know, you would see, you, would, you could imagine going on this. Uh, and then we started looking at other parts throughout the shop, um, smaller parts that we used to run on our Mianos, and the changeover time was so much faster, uh, we started instituting this into our BB, which is a big machine, but our throughput is, is so much greater. Uh, even going from this part, which used to run on a twin uh, turret of Kuma, to the BB, we found that, yeah, the cycle time with the twin turret machine is faster, but at the end of the day, we produce more parts because our guys that are running it don't have to put a part in. And when we run this first side in 90 seconds, they're putting a part in every 90 seconds, they don't have any time to check their parts. So the machine's waiting while they're checking their parts, documenting. Now the machine's loading itself, unloading itself, <laughs> and they're able to keep the machine going. If they need to use the restroom, they just go. They come back. Uh, we found that it, it holds excellent size. Um, the repeatability and the uptime on it has really been fantastic. We've seen no problems. Um, we then had our Eurotex, our 710, we make a adapter cages. Uh, these are 16, uh, they're size 16 cages, which is inch and a half hex bar stock. Uh, we ran them on our 710 for a year and a half, uh, all different series of them. Uh, what we found was, while it produced a part excellent, I wouldn't tell anyone not to do it, but inch and a half bar stock, we were cutting them down to four foot lengths, and still the bar width from material to material became just almost too much for the machine. Uh, I was limited to, uh, at times, 400 RPMs, uh, which really drained on my cycle time for my roughing uh, I then went to, you know, you know, my father were talking, and said, well, let's, let's just put it on the VV and see what happens. So we have the live tooling. Uh, we decided to slug the parts and enter them in. Uh, now, with the hex, this doesn't really work well. So I made my own pockets and took a piece of material, put the pins in to ride in the carousel. We mill the hex in there for the orientation and now we're moving parts along through there. Since that time I brought this, but we've taken odd shaped parts, which aren't round. We mill our own pockets in the same uh, fixture and we can do any size, shape, part you know, we wish. Uh, you know, it's really opened up a lot of uh, a lot of different avenues. But going to this, I was able to go from you know, 400 RPMs to 1,750 RPMs, and my cycle time went down in half on the first stop. Uh, what I do is I typically, currently I pair this with a Harding T51 or T65 on the other side. So I have one operator, and we, we're, we've almost doubled our production going from the, the BV, uh, from the 710 to the BV. Uh, it's also helped our guys part quality is better because you get rid of all the bar whip, all the chatter, all these other things that would you know, typically uh, be a hindrance with the bar fit. Um, we've done other parts, and you know, going to the inverted, these parts here are, uh, we take a part, we make three parts, uh, then we send them out for vacuum brazing together. You have 12L, 303, and 1215. Uh, this is a core tube for hydraulics. Uh, with our inverted spindles, we've gained a lot of efficiency just by chip evacuation. We have to hold a 16 finish in the ID of these, uh, going through three different materials. So the BV has just become uh, a real blessing with chip evacuation, such as going from a vertical to a horizontal mill. Chip evacuation is better. This is just taking us. Uh, we're able to get rid of burnishing and now just ream it and hold the finishes because of the uh, increased chip evacuation. Um, you know, anything from, uh, we do anything from, you know, the smaller parts, we put up to 16 inch diameter parts on there. Uh, we've taken the, we have a 315 with live tooling and a 210 without live tooling. Uh, two different size machines. I put identical chucks on both, so we're able to, with quick change chucks, um, we came in and we had both the tables raised to the identical same height. So we're able to switch jobs, you know, um, as Jeff spoke earlier, we have like type machines. You want to be able to go here for scheduling. If this one's busy, you go right to here. Uh, it just, just makes for, for uh, a seamless flow on production. Um, 
that's that's all I came to, to, to tell you guys about. If you guys have any questions, then I'd love to answer them. What are your, do uh, you use conventional three jaw power chucks yes. on, the, on the machine? Yep. yep. <clears throat> We're now looking at two jaw chuck because uh, we have some rectangular parts that we're going to be running and just using the live tooling to milk. Put your high flame to it. Sure, go right ahead. Uh, so high flame, I think we've done... From a loading standpoint, I used to sell the Emacs, so I'm you're, a little bit familiar with it. You're pretty wide open. I think it sits... Once it's in the... Once it's on your... I think you have a good 12 inches. Check comes over. I think you have a good 12 inches. Just 12 inches mm -hmm. of clearance. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, ability to do AV on that? Do you have a flip over or anything? We don't have it. I know that uh, the BB does have a, the ability to tie two machines together to do the flip over. Okay. But uh, we, we don't do that at this time. We had the HESS up. Uh, it was a blue turn. It, had, it, was, it was almost the same format yeah. as this. Uh, we returned it within three months. It wouldn't hold size. Uh, it, was, it was not a good machine. You know, when we were looking at the machines, we, you know, Kuma has one. I believe the Daewoo has one. Uh, the difference being is, if you go to the Akuma, they have a shuttles that move in with two to three parts, and then they unload onto a carousel, which becomes a problem for each part you do then, you have to make some sort of shuttle. This, the changeover is so fast, and they do have, I think, three different size um, prisms that you can use so you can get into bigger and bigger parts. Um, but the, going from making the, the tooling to shuttle parts in and out to, you know, as I said, just sticking a part on here and letting it pull itself around has been, been amazing. How many parts can you put on the carousel? Uh, it depends on the size range. You can know, do 24, so you can do 12. I think I put 48, or when I, when I have uh, the hex parts, you do 48. 48? Yep. Could you? I would never thought you were making parts like that. Like, yeah, it's really. That's incredible. That's what I thought. When I walked yeah. in there, I was like, what? That's incredible. <laughs> that's really I mean, slick. Are you made that asking feature? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. With you know having the live tooling as well, it's been really nice because I can take what used to be on a mill off that usually you would put this part on a mill. It slows down the cycle time, so we let it go for three hours at night. And we have quite an extensive trade to move these parts away, uh, but we'll let it go. We use all solid CBM tooling and put the milling app in. So instead of 90 seconds, I put it up to four minutes a piece. So we just, we just leave the building. When the parts are done, mm -hmm. where does the machine deposit the parts? Well, you have you have your, your work envelope here. Then you're going to have between the carousel and your work envelope, there's a out conveyor. So it sets the part of the out conveyor and then raises itself up and goes over and picks Don't you sell part. this product, Tim? <laughs> uh, I have not sold it yet. <laughs> Damn, I didn't know so I think people really look at, at this machine going into like a GM or something and having it make the same part over and over and over and over again. We automate anything from 50 parts and up. Uh, it's, it's, it's worth it uh, for us to do this. You know, and this is actually uh, taking place in now all of our Akumas. We've got very all of our Akumas. We run it 24 hours a day, six days a week. It's people who want conversation, so he can answer the question. There is a video on the machine on the website running this hex part on your website. Art did it. The video quality is not the video quality is not the, the best. And that would be my one suggestion in you guys' presentation I was listening to. Where I have a salesman come in and I sit down and I take the time to sit down and we get the laptop out. The video quality has to be has to be raised up because a lot of times we're just taking a camera and you guys are taking a picture of something. It doesn't show me what I want to see, you know, and it's it's grainy. It, it really might be in the best interest of you guys have a beautiful set up here. Plan out a week to go around and have some customers ready. So we just want to videotape something. See, he did his part. Well, well, the video quality is everything. And then my other suggestion would be is you had said YouTube. I put 
the videos on YouTube, and then when you guys come in, I see everyone has a BlackBerry phone or something. A lot of times I don't have the time to go. Let's go to the conference room, take jackets off, talk. You got something cool. Pull it up on your phone. I mean, then I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I can, I can talk to you later. Uh, me, uh, I, I set up the machines, I program, I'm working screw machines, I'm doing whatever, so my time is spent flying around everywhere. But uh, just something quick like that, it helps. Or if you're on the phone with a customer, you say, hey, when you're on YouTube, just type in Eurotech. You go check out four videos. Because I'm at home jacking around on the computer, and I'd love to. And I'm always trying to see something cool. But if there's a video in there, I think we have about eight of them. Do you know? Yeah, we do. Yeah, I just checked. So if you go out there and go on Eurotech, I, 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 I subscribe. It's funny. We get subscribers all over the world. Yeah. It's really interesting. You know, yeah. and then you look who subscribe. It's weird. I mean, you yeah. got a real mixture of people. You like all too. Yeah, yeah, we got the like all mm -hmm. so. Quick question. Sure. You could, since you put 48 of these on a on the carousel, mm -hmm. could you alternate every other one yes, and sure. flip it? Mm -hmm. That way you get a complete part off. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, might. My, and what's nice too is when you build your fixtures, it makes it so you can't screw it up. So I'm always worried. Uh, you know, one of my my things has always been flip ops. I mean, my Akumas are set up. We ran flip ops one side, flipped over the other. I can't tell you how many crashes I've had. Somebody failed to flip it or put in a blank when they should have had the other side in. You can really put in a lot of things here, so that doesn't matter. Did you build a fixture that you put more than? Yes, you can yeah, actually really. take a, if you wanted a round part, if you had a, a, a really easy piece, you could put it in here and you could probably, I think you could put three to four in there to program it to know where it's at because you go to the center, well, you can, and you could, no, you can't do that. Yeah, you can put, the them, in, you can put them in line here. So you can move the carousel out of it. So you, you can put them in the Right. Yeah, exactly. uh, just, just, just the key to this is uh, this does have the PV has a Y axis available. Yeah. yeah. Because years ago the the limitation with the EMAG was only because it was like four to six inches. So your limitation on on your slug it, it was was very very short. So that's why I asked what the what your What's your limitation for, for loading? If it's 12 yeah, inches, is much tighter. That that opens up a bigger envelope to what you can do with this than the other. I would say right now our typical parts are cast iron parts, 30, 36. We do push 40 pounds on that occasion, uh, and that that's the other nice thing is I now have, you know, this job typically for me uh, we had to have a man run because when you're in an Akuma, your chuck is good almost put half in there, and you're putting the part out like this all day. And now I have women doing the lift from here to a table that's a lot more ergonomically friendly. Well, no, no, no. I just want to have only two of them. They keep moving. So, really, really. I was going to ask you, do you have one person running both, or how to... We go back and forth, uh, depending on, on jobs. Uh, I have four machines, one set of guys, one operator, because uh, we go through setups daily. So the, the individual could be running uh, the BV and a party jet, usually paired with it. We have diagonal, the other um, real turn, so they could go from here to here. Um, at the time, and I think quickly we'll be getting rid of the party and we're going to BV, BV. Do you want to do that this afternoon? It's been on the train and now you have a heart and it's on the chair. It's 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 really really the new I'm we're now looking to put uh, on our next one, I think we're gonna be going through a pellet so uh, we have a lot of parts that uh, have really tight uh concentricity call out so five tenths. So you, you break down and set up that B B almost once a day? That's incredible. It's, 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 it's just, you know, so all of us, or at least I, would have thought of BV as a high production <coughs> Automotive. We'll, we will set this machine up throughout the, the, the evening. I have really some, I'm going to say, fairly low skill help at night. Uh, and they're able to change over, uh, change the parameters over, and switch 
and I'm not talking to a, a, a similar part. I'm going to a completely different part. We'll go from this to this at 3 o'clock in the morning. Wow. And, and how would you compare that for simplicity of somebody doing it compared to a standard uh, chucker? Well, standard chucker, you're going to be much in the same way, but we've processed the parts, so you come up with standard tuning we're going to use. Right. And so these don't move. And then there may be two or three and you guys do it with with your either seven tens and four twenties all the time every day. We've done the same thing on this charter. And what's nice is you can automate it and you can you can be running on a machine while you do this. Right. Or if you'll set up another machine while this one's still running because you don't have to be there for it again. It's almost like applying a Fanuc robot to uh to a machine. It's probably better for all simple. It's easier. Because yeah. with a Fanuc robot you're in space, yeah. and, and you, have, you have three dimensions to worry about where you're going. You have center lines to worry about. This is out of the box automation, simple, easy to use, and, and very, very effective. I mean, there's no ways to move this. It's over, it's part down. We have to come over, spin with the wash cycle on your jaws, red chips, and the air blast through the spindle. Uh, to, to prevent any chips. And it's just a lot of creativity you have. Um, and I uh, know uh, for everyone, anyone's welcome down. We'd be happy to, to, to have you guys come on in with the customer, take a look at the machine, and no problems whatsoever with that. How do you compare it to all your other machines, including your other Europe customers? Um, I think we like it better. Than, 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 or Eurotex, I mean, but that's, we had a rough go starting with our Eurotex, we had some personnel <laughs> problems, and now they've really turned around, so we're, we're in love with Eurotex. It's, it's, it's Quality of the BB, no Always top notch, uh -huh. top notch. Yeah. Also, as we, we recently uh, had a, our friends from OSHA stop on there, and they had a lot of praise for just all, both BBs and the Eurotex. So I was very thankful. They, they love them. Right. They love them. The only thing that I got dinged for on it, the only thing I got dinged for is on the 710, the door, where the parts come out, and you, you can open it up. Yeah. They said that could be a potential hazard, but they, they overlooked it. So. Well, they had to find something. Oh, that's otherwise they don't get paid. So, as I said, anyone's there, you know, welcome. I left some literature on the back of where we are, what we do, on my card. I invite anyone to come on down and be a customer. We'll make sure that, that you guys have an impressive show. So, but we run these, we run all of our cast iron dry, too. So, you can really see the operation of the machine, and it's a fun, it's a fun thing to watch. So. Any other questions? Excellent. Give us a lot. Thank you. Thank you.